can you imagine putting a pit tag in American Eel and following it all the way back to the Sargasso <laughs> Sea and, and finding where they breed something no one has ever seen before, wow. ever, um, or even being able to breed American Eel. No one's ever bred American Eel before. The award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We're excited about today's show. Uh, it's all about the uh, the Recovering America's Wildlife Act, and we got a lot of cool stuff to share with you, but we also have a house full of people. People, uh, in-house and on Zoom. We're social distancing like we've been doing That's for a while. That's right. That's right. Uh, but anyway, Miss Pandy Upchurch, the TWRA Assistant Chief of Biological Diversity, is with us today. Hey. And then Sean Seville, Alliance for America's Fish and Wildlife Campaign Manager. He's with us via Zoom, and we appreciate him being here. So, uh, and then Mr. Don King, as always, helping me co-host. Yes, sir, Jason, and I appreciate Sean for the cool t-shirts we've got exactly we've got yeah today if you if you're watching you'll have to tune in and check out the shirts we're going to talk about these shirts our nature our nation and our future uh, those are for sale at I'll get it right here recoveringwildlife.com yeah so uh, you can buy these shirts and donate uh, a little bit of money to help with the recovering america's wildlife act and uh, we're going to learn about all that today uh, sean's going to jump in here and, and tell us about uh, who the alliance is what they do and all that fun stuff and uh, we'll just kick it off there so uh, Sean thanks for being with us well Jason thanks for having me appreciate the opportunity to, to get on the podcast today yeah nice y'all virtually yeah yeah we appreciate you too and and uh, we're ready to, to learn about learn about the Alliance tell us what the Alliance does when was it created and what what's what's it there for yeah, thanks. So the Alliance for America's Fish and Wildlife uh, really came into existence back in 2017. Uh, it was built on the strong partnership that was put together uh, by the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies and the many partners that worked on the Blue Ribbon Panel. Um, some folks might be familiar with that process. They, they came back together in uh, 2016 to make some recommendations as to how to fund uh, our fish and wildlife conservation for the future. And, uh, you know, brought together folks from the automotive industry, energy sector, manufacturing, sportsmen's and women's organizations, NGOs, state, federal fish and wildlife agencies, academ academia, everybody you can imagine might have a, a stake in, in fish and wildlife conservation to uh, really take this thing to the next level, figure out how to sustainably fund our fish and wildlife conservation for the 21st century. So, um, you know, the, the alliance really has turned into the national campaign to pass the Recovering America's Wildlife Act. Uh, that's that's our mission. Uh, that's what we're here to do. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to, to working with everybody to get this thing across the finish line. Awesome. Can, uh, can you explain the Blue Ribbon Panel just a little bit so folks at home that may not know about that, they'll, they'll understand that part of it? Sure, yeah. So, you know, back in 2014, uh, the association, that's AFWA for short, uh, came together with all the state fish and wildlife agencies and federal partners, you know, the, that team of folks that I had described earlier, mm -hmm. uh, Morris from Bass Pro Shops, um, former governor of Wyoming, uh, Dave Friedenthal, uh, you know, CEOs and, and partners of many of the conservation groups that, that you all work with on the ground and, and work on good conservation initiatives across the country uh, to come up with a set of recommendations as to how to really look at sustainable, dedicated funding for fish and wildlife con conservation for those 12,000 species of greatest conservation need that states have identified in their state wildlife action plans that don't have a dedicated, sustainable funding stream for their conservation. So, you know, there's license fees and excise taxes that, that good, you know, sportsmen and women pay through their hunting and licensing fee, hunting and fishing licenses and the gear that they buy you know, that a portion of that goes back to conservation led by the states, and that's all good. Mm -hmm. There are tons, you know, the, the vast, per, you know, majority of the species under states' care are not funded through any direct stream of money. So how do you come up with a, a dedicated funding stream to, to work on the conservation of those species? And that's what the Blue Ribbon Panel's charge was. And they made that recommendation, and that has translated into the, uh, the legislative language for the Recovering America's Wildlife Act. 
Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we gotta we gotta protect those little creatures too. All those non game uh, critters that run around out there. As, as Jennifer likes to say, sometimes Jennifer was new to our assistant or our chief of uh, outreach and communications. She uh, she always says you gotta protect those little critters too. So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, but anyway, all right. Well, uh, so yeah, for years hunters and anglers have bought licenses, and you know that's how we've done the majority of our business over the years. And yep. and uh, like like Sean said, you know, a portion of that those excise taxes that that get paid when equipment's bought and fishing gear and that sort of thing comes back to us from the the federal government. But uh, sometimes sometimes those funds fall short. It just kind of depends, you know, and it's. Boy, it sure would be nice to have a dependable uh, money stream that that every state could count on to to take care of all the little critters that we're talking about here. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I want to mention this: our nature, our nature USA dot com. That's the a, a reference there, a website you can go to and learn more about the alliance and your mission. Right. Um, so. The Recovering America's Wildlife Act. Let's uh, let's touch on that. Um, and I thought maybe we could cut to Pandy here and just uh, sure. learn a little bit about what what we're doing in Tennessee with our with our wildlife action plan, right? And how this affects us, and then we can get back to Sean on some more details on this on this act. Absolutely. So for our non-game species, the species that we we don't hunt, and especially those that are becoming at risk or rare, our species of greatest conservation need. Um, In 2005, way back, we had to write a state wildlife action plan. Mm -hmm. And in that state wildlife action plan, we listed the species that we consider species of greatest conservation need. Uh, And back then, it was 664 species. Mm -hmm. Uh, But even with 664 species, it was determined we weren't getting near enough money to do what we had planned to be able to keep those species from becoming further threatened and possibly in, endangered. And once and they so, cross that line, it's a whole different can right, of worms, isn't right, it? Right, right. So, yes, if we can get the funding up front to be able, once they're, they're becoming rare, because in Tennessee, you've got your GCN, your Species of Greatest Conservation mm-hmm. Need, and that's before our Deemed in Need of Management. Um, now, Deemed in Need of Management can be a Species of Greatest Conservation Need, but we can start working on species just when we're seeing them decline. For example, now, n- no one wants to hear this, but the northern Bob White is, a, is one of our GCN species. So now mm-hmm. we can use some of this funding, some of the state wildlife Grant money uh, that we that we started getting in 2005 uh-huh. to work to work on the conservation of species, including um, Bob White quail. So um, it was determined that we didn't get near enough money to do what we planned to do to be able to to help these species. Only about five percent of what was needed. Wow. And so yeah, so um, we again had to write a state wildlife action plan in, in 2015, and then when we did uh, the the plan in in 2015. Um, uh, our number of species of greatest conservation need jumped up to 1,499. Oh, wow. Um, that's because we decided that we wanted to, you know, the whole agency and the state wants to focus on habitat. Mm-hmm. So we included plants on our state wildlife action plan. We worked with our sister partner, in, you know, in the state, TDEC, the Department of Environment and Conservation. So they had their plant species of greatest conservation needs. So so now we're almost up to 1,500 species that we're trying to, to manage by managing their habitat in various ways. And so, um, so we've got a lot of species. But I don't, I don't know if we can mention this yet, you know, because it's kind of like the big thing at the end. But, you know, if we could get our, our part, our apportionment of, of the Recovering America's Wildlife Act, that would be $29 million a year. Every year. Wow. Every Steady year stream. for Tennessee. And uh, the, the biological diversity folks in the regions, we've gotten together and, and we're getting a strategy mm-hmm. of, you know, what, you know, the, it, the the only thing that would be worse of not getting it would be getting it not knowing what to do with it. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. So, you got right. to have a plan. <laughs> right. Right? we got to have a plan. Yeah. So we got together, and oh, my goodness, with that type of money, um, we, we could have big dreams. I mean, I mean, a lot of times we look at West Tennessee. I love West Tennessee, but we'll, they've got some major issues, especially with the streams, uh-huh. the rivers there. But with this kind of money, we could start working on stream restoration in West Tennessee. And that's one of our huge goals is to go back and to create those means 
meandering uh, streams again because with RAWA, the Recovering America's Wildlife Act, we can use uh, different forms of match. You know, now all of our match has to be state match. But if we get RAWA, we can use some federal money, uh, such as from the Corps of Engineers or TVA or military money, uh-huh. Department of Defense. So, so match uh, will be easier as well. So we can take on some great projects, big projects with that kind of money. And you mentioned 2005 is when the state wildlife action plans were were originally I- created implemented it mm-hmm. yeah and i mean i remember the hours and days and the weeks and months uh, involved in in all the personnel being out there taking inventory basically of right what our species right. are what we have and i know some new discoveries were made through those efforts and, oh absolutely and, uh, so you know it, it Things like this don't happen overnight. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, yes. So um, we've got folks out there continuing to do research in the field. Our people doing research and surveys. But the amount of money that we currently uh, fund universities with, I mean, most of this money is going to university research. It's staff, but also university Uh research. And uh, the universities, they are doing surveys, but they're also dealing with the disease. You know, we've got white nose syndrome. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we're looking at. Uh, we've got folks at MTSU studying the, the microbiome of gray bat wings uh, because, <laughs> you know, even though gray bats were one of our endangered uh, bats, they don't seem to be as susceptible to white nose syndrome. Uh-huh. So we're using some of this money to find out why. Uh, we're looking at chytrid fungus and ranavirus and the amphibians. Uh, and now in MTSU also is looking at um, snake fungal disease, something that's affecting our, our uh, snakes. And, uh-huh. And reptiles. So, and then we're looking at salamanders. As, as as I always say, I can't leave this room without saying Tennessee is the salamander capital of the world. Um, we're also looking at bee sal. So uh, UT, this is a nationwide um, effort, but UT is heading it up to where we can look at bee sal before it even gets to this country. So it's in Europe now, but we wow. want to we want to try to stop it at the borders before we even have to deal with that. So we're already doing tons of stuff, but we can do so much more. Yeah. So so Sean, how how could someone? Uh, and I know you'll know this right off the top of your head, but how could someone help and and uh, sign on to this to this initiative? Well, so thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. And thanks, Pandy, for all your your work and the the knowledge you bring to this. Uh, You know, as she said, you know, the the existing money that comes through the state and tribal wildlife grant program, $900,000 annually, right? The the allocation to Tennessee through the Recovering America's Wildlife Act, $29 million. Just just think about all that, the work and all the critters out there that that we could work on and and help to protect and all their habitat with that money. Um, And, you know, Tennessee is one of the places that that has, you know, some of the the greatest biodiversity in the nation. Uh, you have the the some of the most diverse habitats and ecosystem areas in the country. All the creeks and lakes and rivers and mountains and everything. You know, mm-hmm. so just imagine uh, all those critters out there. That some people don't even probably know about, but uh, it's important that that they're out there and that they're providing valuable services to to give us clean air and water and all the the fiber and food and things that, that we enjoy every day. Um, but folks that want to get engaged, uh, there are a couple of things that, that we would suggest that you do. Uh, one, you could get one of these great looking t-shirts at <laughs> recoverwildlife.com. Yeah. And those, uh, portion of those proceeds go back to the Alliance to help with the work that we're doing to help pass this legislation. If you want to get more directly engaged in uh, helping to pass the legislation, you can go to ournatureusa.com and write a letter to your representative encouraging them to pass this legislation uh, for the future of our uh, critters and habitat and all the outdoor recreation uh, activities that folks like to do. Uh, this is this is a game changer for conservation, and, and we really hope people get engaged. Awesome. Yeah. So one thing I want to mention, too, and make sure we don't forget about is, is your, your social channels at Our, Na- Our Nation uh, USA on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you can follow them on there. We've been posting some of y'all's stuff and, and sharing that on our social media. So uh, trying to get the word out that way. Um, but, yeah, tell them about the shirt. So if they wanted to get a shirt and, and there's also a, a face mask that they could purchase, too, tell them, tell them about that and how they get it and all that fun stuff. Sure. So uh, we're partnering up with 
with Tennessee this week, uh, we hope to to work with uh, state agencies and, and partners across the country uh, over the coming weeks here and appreciate all the, the work that, that you and your team are doing down there in Tennessee. And we hope that we can generate some revenue to, to work on this legislation. It all comes back around. If we get money, you guys get the, the lion's share of the money through right. this legislation. So uh, it all goes back on the ground to help uh, conservation uh, happen out there. So uh, folks can go to recoverwildlife.com, get a t-shirt, uh, they can follow us at Our Nature USA uh, on Facebook and Twitter and uh, Instagram. Get engaged that way. Um, and, you know, this is really just one of those opportunities with all that's going on in the world. There's this whole pandemic thing. People are turning to nature more and more to, you know, seek refuge and do, you know, all the, the outdoor recreation that they like to do. It's a great way to relief stress, social distancing, that whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the more and more people that are out there could stress out our, our natural resources. It also, I think, is is making people a little bit potentially more appreciative of what we do have and taking a sort of harder look at, well, what can I do to help protect these resources for our future generation, for our kids? You know, you see my son here in the background. <laughs> you know, this is why we do this work is to protect the, the resources for, for our kids and their kids uh, make sure that they have the same outdoor recreation opportunities that we've had and we enjoy in our lifetime uh, so they can have that going in. And, um, you know, it, it's just it's just something that, that people feel strongly about. They can do positive action from home. They don't have to get outside if they don't want to. They don't have to go into a, a crowded room anywhere. They don't have to, to go into an office. They can do it from the comfort of their own home. Go to recoverwildlife.com. Go to Our Nature USA. Uh, get engaged, uh, help us out, and uh, you know, leave us something for our for our future generations. Let folks know where you stand. Wear the shirt around. Yeah, you know, hey, <laughs> get the message out there. Yeah, you mentioned the pandemic and folks being outside and and kind of changing the way we think about things. Uh, you know, we've seen an uptick in license sales. People are outdoors, getting outside, enjoying what's around them. Uh, you got to think about responsible recreation. Now that's a little a campaign that's going around. You can mm-hmm. see that online. Right. Uh, you know, keeping your waters and streams clean, and and uh, so get you a shirt and take your kids out and show off uh, show off what you love, you know, and share and share the mission. So I think we, yeah. you know, do our part, and and uh, the agency will will be there to help and back it up. Yeah, know? that's right. And I think there's a variety of things available there too. There's, I see a V-neck that I that I haven't seen the original version of yet here. But yeah, uh, yeah, and a the V-neck available. And the neck gaiter, or, or what they they call the 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 buff or face mask. Yeah, you know, yeah, that'd come in yeah. handy for sure. They said, uh, "What TN free shipping? If you use that code, you can get free shipping on on the products." And uh, so that's, that's, right. that's cool too. Yeah, a little incentive for, for folks in Tennessee to, to get out and appreciate what they love and, uh, you know, do the, like you said, engage, practice, and responsible recreation. Um, be respectful of folks. Be respectful of the critters that are out there. Um, and, hey, take, take a picture of yourself wearing the, the face mask or wearing a T-shirt. Put it up on social media. Let us know where you're at, uh, what you're doing out there, what you enjoy doing, uh, wildlife watching or hunting, hunting or angling or whatever it is you're out there doing. Uh, let us know how we can help and how we can uh, engage you more in uh, helping protect all those activities. So you can tag them at Our Nature USA, or how would, what kind of hashtag would you use? You Getting. can use uh, hashtag Recover Wildlife too, and that goes to the, the national campaign. That's the hashtag that all the partners of the alliance are using in the posts that they put up uh, about this campaign. Awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. Penny, I know you brought. Uh, a document with you Absolutely. that we've been working real mm-hmm. hard on. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us about that. Well, we well this is part of our vision document that you know how we would use this money if if we got it. And you know we talked about our rivers and streams, and you know one of our our most diverse rivers is the Duck River, and it's one of the most diverse rivers in the entire continent, much right. less you know this country. Um, so uh, we have a the Cumberland River Aquatic Center, and um, it, it, even though it's the Cumberland River, it also focuses on tributaries to the Tennessee River, rivers in general, and mussels in general. So uh-huh. so some of our 
our most endangered species are our mussel species. And so uh, we're propagating endangered species at our Cumberland River Aquatic Center. One thing that um, we have issues with, though, is the water quality there. So, you know, with money like this, we could create a water treatment plant for our Cumberland River Aquatic Center, and, and we could secure, we could have a biosecure facility uh-huh. to where we don't have to deal with, you know, increased uh, ammonia and things of that sort. Hmm. So that would be that would be incredible to yeah. do that. But, you know, we've got one species, the pale lily put, that, we, that was thought to be the extinct. What? <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. We talk about those little critters, you know, like the Lilliputians. <laughs> uh, the, the pale lily put is, uh, and that's just its common name. Don't ask me to say it, son. <laughs> but the pale lily put was thought to be extinct in in Tennessee, and I mean we've got some amazing people working at the Cumberland River wow. Aquatic Center, yeah. like Wadon and and David Sims mm-hmm. and and Jason Wisniewski. Yeah. You mentioned Jennifer earlier, but but they can take a, a gravid female, which means a female that's pregnant. You know, and they can raise those baby mussels. And they found just a few of those pale lily puts in a tributary to the Duck River. And they took them out to the aquatic center and they raised them. And now they're they're putting them back and release and, them so, back to the wild. And they're not only going to not be extinct, but you know, we might we might actually bring them back. Right. So, so stuff like that, you know, at the aquatic center is amazing. Uh-huh. We've got alligator snapping turtles there. We've got uh, American eel there, which is one of my favorites. Just, I mean, can you imagine putting a pit tag and American eel and following it all the way back to the Sargasso <laughs> Sea and, and finding where they breed something no one has ever seen before, wow. ever. Um, or even being able to breed American eel. No one's ever bred American eel before. So, because mostly what we see up in the streams here are all females. Hmm. So, uh, just learn. we're learning a ton about the species that we're, you know, propagating and, and uh, you know, we don't know which uh, mussel species that American eel may be the host fish for. Hmm. And what I'm talking about is for every mussel, there's a host fish, and in, in order to, to for them to to propagate and to distribute their young, um, they have to have a fish come in and they release their glycidia, which are their babies, onto the gills of fish, mm-hmm. and so they infest the fish. The fish swim away, and that's how mussels move. Because if you look at a mussel, they don't have any <laughs> right, other way right. to get around. <laughs> uh-huh. So, um, so yeah, we're focusing on both the the mussels and their fish host, and you know you can't you can't conserve something that you don't. No, so there's lots of research uh, to be done um, in that respect. So we're doing a lot of stuff out at the aquatic center. We're learning tons of things about bats. Our folks, you know, we put uh, transmitters on endangered bat species, like the Indiana bat. Mm. And you know, have we got Barbara, the incredible pilot, up there? Uh-huh. And uh, I, I can't imagine asking any other pilot in the whole world to, okay, now follow that bat. <laughs> 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 but that's what we ask Barbara to do, and and we got people that have receivers, and and we got the bats with transmitters on them, and following Indiana bats uh, from East Tennessee, and everybody had their vehicles pointed, you know, shoes up in the air, and everybody had their vehicles pointed north to be mm-hmm. able to follow the Indiana bats to their their uh, maternity roost, and they went south to Alabama. <laughs> so I mean, Indiana stuff. bats, Alabama, yeah, <laughs> makes and sense that's... to me. <laughs> but you know what? They but several of them have gone to Wilson. County, huh. right here in Tennessee. They're doing a lot of work out there. Aren't they're doing you? a yeah. lot of work in Wilson County, and so not only are they learning where they go, but they're also creating habitat with, yeah. with artificial roost structures. Um, this is this uh, artificial um, Trees, bark, yeah, 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 bark that they can can uh, use for the Indiana bats hmm. to, to roost in. So yeah, so we're we're learning, but we're also creating habitat. We're burning more. Uh, one of the things that we want to do with the uh, Rawa money is to create burn tombs across the state so that we can manage unique habitats like savannas uh, and things of that sort, even cedar glades. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, and, and buying, you know, caves, you know, that's one of the things most people have no idea that, that TWRA owns 15 caves, um, but we do, mm-hmm. and, and we want more uh, if they contain endangered species. So purchasing of, of caves and, and land in general, habitat in general. We, I mean, we could buy wetlands, we could buy caves, uh-huh. we could acquire um Lots of money, uh, so I mean, acquire lots of habitat. So that would that would be incredible. Bill um, Smith just sent me an email the other uh, day of, of some savannas and things that they're working on at Cocker Bottoms and yes. some of those properties. It's amazing the work that they're doing out Absolutely. there and, and trying to bring quail back and mm-hmm. improving their properties and some beautiful savannas. And if you want to hear a quail, that's where you go. Uh-huh. You know, when's the last time you? I, I haven't heard a quail in a while, and I live. I in, miss them. 
I, I miss really them too. Miss them. I miss them. So um, that, um, and you know, um, just teaching people about what we do. I mean, we can use some of Rawa money with, for educational purposes. Whereas right. with state wildlife grants, we could uh, like put up a sign on what we're doing, um, but we couldn't necessarily uh, use the the money for for education. Right, right. So yeah, that's cool. You know, I'm really proud of of Tennessee's role in this because we've been actively putting together our vision documents and, and helping the alliance and working with the Tennessee Wildlife Federation here in the state. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've got uh, four co sponsors in Tennessee on this bill. So one of the things that you can do is uh, write and thank them. For, okay. for being interested in species of greatest conservation need, at-risk species. And it's two Democrats and two Republicans. And, and, and how <laughs> wonderful yeah, how wonderful go. is that right now? Bi- bipartisan. Um, but uh, Steve Cohen has always sponsored this. He's from Memphis and Jim Cooper. Um, and then uh, Charles Fleischman. I talked to Charles Fleischman. Um, Chuck. <laughs> I know him by Chuck. There you no, go. <laughs> no, I talked to him. You know, we, we don't lobby, but we can talk and we can do this. We can share yeah. with them what we would do with the money uh-huh. if we got it. Sure. And I talked to him several years back about peregrine falcons. He's a real falconry fan. And I said, well, you know, we're about to take peregrine falcons off of the, the, the risk list because um, they're doing better uh-huh. and more people can use them for falconry. And and that really got captured his attention and, and he's he's come on board uh, with us as well as uh, David Kirstoff. So, you know, we've got a bipartisan group of folks that's co-sponsoring. And if it makes it to the Senate, which, you know, when it may, I should slap me. When, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, Pandy, when, yes. <laughs> when it makes it to the Senate, you know, Lamar Alexander, we're hoping will be a co-sponsor mm, uh, yeah. in the Senate. So, so Tennessee has really stepped up for this and and i'm proud of us That's for awesome. doing so absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. Yeah. awesome awesome well we're going to run out of time but i want to thought do you want to mention just real quick some of your guys out in the field you mentioned your folks that work across the state we got a lot of folks doing this work in our, our different regions oh absolutely so I'll, I'll go with the manager threes that are in the field that are our biodiversity coordinators in each region uh in region four in east tennessee it's scott dykes and he loves birds, mm-hmm. and he does a lot of that habitat uh, work with uh, savannas. Uh, and then we've got Chris Simpson uh, in Region 3, the uh-huh. Cumberland Plateau. Right. Uh, he's a good bat person. I've done bat programs with him. Uh, here in Region 2, Middle Tennessee, is Josh Campbell. I mean, he's known nationwide for, for working with bats. And Rob Colvin in West Tennessee, he's doing all that West Tennessee stuff, like alligator snapping turtles <laughs> and, and uh, alligator gars and, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. So we're all doing our thing in our region. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks for the shout out. Sean, I want to give you the last word. Tell everybody where they can find the information real quick. www.recoverwildlife.com for the shirts and face masks. Go to rnatureusa.com for more information about the legislation, about the campaign, and uh, get engaged. This is also, it's not just about the critters, it's about economics, it's about big business, it's about jobs, it's about putting people back to work, doing good stuff. High paid jobs, uh, 30,000 jobs a year this bill can put back on the ground. So uh, get behind us and uh, we look forward to working with everybody. And thanks for all the great work that TWRA is doing on this. Awesome. Well, I thank you. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for being a part of this. Don, thank you for joining us. You bet. Uh, Pandy, thank you again. Absolutely. And uh, thank y'all for watching. Thanks for listening. Keep coming back, keep tuning in, and uh, we'll keep bringing you the great outdoor news of Tennessee. And uh, we'll talk to you or see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.